Total Screen proudly presents the Weekly Set Podcast with Tyson Gifford and William Rorick. Episode 217, recorded August 3rd, 2019. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Set, the official podcast of the Total Screen. I am your host. My name is Tyson, and joining me today, as always, is my partner in crime here at the Total Screen, William Rorick. Hello. So, today, we are going to talk about Veronica Mars Season 4 in its entirety, which dropped on Hulu, what, two weeks ago or three weeks ago? Something Uh, like that. Two weeks ago. Yeah, so we're, we're going to talk about that, about the, the whole season, and just kind of go over our feelings of it. Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago we did a podcast where Will was kind of catching up on Season 3 and to the movies and stuff, so if you want to kind of do a review on that, you can go back like two weeks on the podcast and check that out. But now we're going to be talking about Season 4. So, uh, let's just start off with general impressions. What were your thoughts of Season 4? My general thoughts of season four was it was pretty strong. I mean, there there are areas where it was weak. I mean, it's it's it didn't reach like the level of greatness, but I thought it was a big improvement over season three. Yeah. Um, I still think overall, I think season two is still better. Um, yeah, I'd say so. I thought it was a good return for the series. Like I'm excited to see it continue. Yeah, I'm hoping it does. I don't think there's any word yet on it getting no a fourth uh, f s season. There isn't. There's any word on it getting fifth season. But the Rob Thomas is planning on more. He said as much in in multiple interviews, especially like uh, his his justification for how it ended is predicated on there being more Veronica Mars. Yeah, and he, you know, there's uh, definitely um, an opening in his schedule right now. I Zombie is coming to a close, uh, so that pretty much leaves him open for Veronica Mars. And uh, Kristen Bell is, is she's got one more season of The Good Place to go, and then she's done with that. So and her schedule is all so. Yeah, I mean, she was doing this while doing The Good Place, and now she's right. going to have The Good Place off of her. Right, because apparently, like the uh, the schedules lined up nicely in place and do a season for Veronica Mars. So we haven't really gotten any any spoilers yet or anything, but I'm just going to say this up front. We are going full spoil. We're not going to hold back. We're going to discuss the season. So we're going to be talking about kind of everything that goes on. So if you haven't watched it yet. Watch it and come back to this podcast. Yes. Uh, We're going to go in full spoilers. Um, So another thing that before we even just get into breaking down like the main storyline stuff, uh, one thing that a lot of people found kind of contentious, like people, some people loved it, some people didn't like it, was the ending. What did you think of the ending of the season? Season. And um, you know what I mean by that. Yeah, I know what you mean. It was a gut punch. Yeah. And, and I admit, like, I was I was kind of pissed. I was like, oh, how could that happen? How could this happen? And then, like, I don't know. But then I went I went through the stages of grief. I went through, like, denial. Like, no, no, he's, there's going to be, like, a surprise at the end, right? There's going to be, like, it's a fake out. It's a fake out. Then, then I went through like, like you know, like anger. Like, oh, how could they do this? This is not right. How could they do this? And then finally, like, I, I'm at the acceptance. I'm like, okay, it's done. It's happened. You know, this, this is gonna lead to, you know, di- this is gonna, gonna lead to, uh, you know, Veronica like branching off and doing like different things. It's cool. It's cool. It's fine. Yeah, I was, uh, I kind of <laughs> saw it coming. Not, not just because, not just because I saw it coming on my own, but because unfortunately, unless you watch a show like this immediately upon its arrival, you're going to see like stories with headlines popping up in your news feeds and everything. On my phone, I had tons of stories on my news feed with headlines like, um, it didn't give it away completely, but like, you know, Veronica Mars season four is devastating end or like why fans are angry about the end of season four. Or, yeah. Like they, fans they are upset you, about a they, Choice thankfully, at the end of I four. didn't see any of those headlines, so thankfully so I, I didn't have yeah. any expectations for a devastating ending. So I, I, I knew something was coming, and it kind of created this weird like meta game in my head. Where as I'm like, watching it, like you're trying to guess what the devastating ending is. Yeah, like every like there were like all these things where it's like, is this is this it? Like when he like redeployed, I'm like, oh shit! Like they're gonna get through the mystery, and then she's gonna find out he died overseas, and then and then like the stuff with her father, I'm like. 
oh shit, he's gonna die. Her father's gonna die. And then, you know, like, he's gonna, he's gonna have so many problems with his, with the thing, or he's gonna, you know, like, like, you're gonna find out something really bad about his condition. And, you know, that's gonna be it. So it's like, I, I kept having things like that. I even had, like, there was a moment where I was like, oh shit, they're gonna kill off that new girl, that Maddie, uh, character that's kind of like her protege. And that's gonna be kind of fucked up, you know? So like, like, it just is constant like that. Like, I, as I'm watching, I'm just like, oh, this is gonna happen. Oh no, th- this is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. It's kind of, it was kind of distracting and annoying. So I, 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 I envy you not having that experience. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I still, I don't know how I feel about the ending. Cause I like, I like the gut punch of it. I like gut punches on shows. I like when a show can really make you feel and make you kind of go like, oh fuck, why? You know? But at the same time, I'm like, that's one of my favorite things about Veronica Mars is the Veronica Logan relationship. Yeah. Now it's gone. And Rob Thomas basically, I read the interviews, Rob Thomas basically chalked it up to, uh, he didn't know what to do with Logan and he didn't want to have to write for Logan if Logan wasn't going to be involved in the mysteries. You know, he didn't want Logan to just be there as the doughy husband or something. He basically, he basically said, yeah, that's boring. I don't want to write that. So I killed Logan. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Like, there, there is truth to that. Like, if you look at, like, what you could do with Logan's character, it's kind of limited. There are, there's a lot of stuff with Logan that was just good in this season that wasn't even, like, a big deal. Like, like when Leo came over and Logan was there at the house. Yes. And Logan yes. was just making Leo feel uncomfortable the whole time. Yes. Like, Logan with, was... With a smile on his face the whole time. Like, it, yeah, it made it worse because Logan was just great this, like, season. Like, he was kind yeah. of no, he was kind kind of annoying season three but yeah like, yeah like he was so great throughout the whole season that it made like the ending even worse Definitely. It's, it's, it's like, that's, that's kind of what made it work with, with Logan yeah. in, in, in this season is he wasn't too terribly involved in the plot, but every time he was on screen with her, they'd have like little kind of in jokes, little bits of like dialogue between them that was really fun. And that's kind of what made it work. You know, I, I understand that motivation to kill him though, just because you can't just stretch that out. You know, you right. can't always take your good, a, a good thing you have and stretch it. You know, sometimes you have to put it to an end at a certain point if you don't have anything else to do with the character. But yeah, but it's sad. <laughs> Rob Thomas killed love. <laughs> no, Rob Thomas, and also, also like he, he talks about because the shows the show he, he talks about also because the show is no longer a teen high school drama slash mystery show. It's now a full on mystery show. Mm-hmm. So he just wants to focus on writing Veronica Mars as a mystery show, and, and so he's kind of ditching all the teenage drama that was was a hallmark of the, the previous version. Of the series. He says that, but he brought on a protege for Veronica, who's a high school kid. Yeah, he did. <laughs> well, it's funny because, like, he was directly asked about that in the interview. He's like, oh, okay, so are we gonna... He was di- point- pointedly asked that, because you, you break that up as a point, but he was pointedly asked that. He said, well, they said, well, there's Maddie now who's, like, a high school kid. Are we gonna get, like, the high school drama with her? And uh, and Rob Thomas is like, no, anything with Maddie is gonna have to be a spinoff. Hmm, huh. that's kind of weird. Like, I was kind of hoping they'd keep that mentor kind of relationship that yeah, she would kind of be the the you know well she and keith would be kind of the uh keith figure that you know for veronica like how keith had you know or how veronica had like her father as this kind of figure of, of as like a mentor it'd be kind of interesting if both veronica and keith took that on for maddie right right so I'm going to tell you, we're just kind of going at this however. We're not going to, like, break it down from the beginning. We're just going to jump all over the place. But one thing that I felt was a little weird in the way it was handled, just because, like, he's not necessarily an important character, but, like, he had a number of things happen in a row that should have brought him back to the screen. And that was uh Dick. Dick was in it kind of on the early side of the show, and then he just kind of disappeared. Like, you just didn't see him anymore. Yeah. It's, for a while. Yeah, so, so Dick, yeah, it's weird because, yeah, Dick appears early. And all the stuff that would affect him happens later. <laughs> yeah, all the stuff that would, yeah, especially, like, with his dad getting murdered. Yeah, I mean, his dad's murdered. That's his whole family gone now, because, like, his, I think his mom is kind of just not part of their and, life. And or... he, he doesn't even show up to even, like, learn the news or, like, we get, we don't even, like, get a reaction from him. He literally well, like, does Yeah, not you think, like, up. after they found out that he died, that Logan would be like, oh, shit, I need to go see Dick. Hold on, you know? And that that would, even if we didn't see Dick, that we'd have Logan 
Negan referencing that he was going to, you know, that he had to go see Dick himself. Right. Because we, they're like best friends. We don't even get that. <laughs> we, we get a Parker cameo instead. Yeah, which is yeah. Kind, that's kind of odd, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's very strange. It's, it's like, uh, I kind of expected we'd get something and then, and then Logan dies and there's still nothing about Dick. It's like, at the point Logan dies, like, Dick, ba- basically everybody Dick cares about is gone. Yeah, everybody Dick cares about. <laughs> Apparently Dick is gone. Maybe Dick, like, died off screen at some point. We just, like, knew about it. It was just never mentioned. I don't know. <laughs> Dick died on his w- way back to his home planet. He'll like, be the yeah. vill- villain of season five. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 but, it is. But he's so dumb that they'll, like, solve it in one episode. It is weird, and, and I really, like, hate when I get, like, it was probably scheduling conflicts with the actor. Like, Yeah, likely. Like, yes. Like, they could only get him for, like, a few episodes. But it's like they chose the wrong episodes. Because they got all these funny bits with him and stuff at the beginning, and that's great and all, and it was fun and all, but, like, there's so much stuff that happens that should directly affect him towards the end of the season. The last episode he appears appears in is the episode with the volleyball game, Bomb on the Beach. Yeah. That's it. There's the bomb goes off, and then you have him kind of partying right afterwards or something. It's like, and, oh, yeah. And that's the last we see of Dick partying about a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> But now, like, his his father's implicated in a bombing death, his brother was implicated in a bombing death, <laughs> uh, and they're both dead. So, yeah, uh, speaking of Big Dick, Casablanca, as they call him, um, his dad, uh, <laughs> what did you think about his end? I thought it was kind of surprising, but then again, I was like, eh, you know what, dude's an asshole, he probably deserves it. I, th- I, I thought I thought it all gelled because, like, because, well, we had the plot line with the, uh, with the two hitmen hired by the cartel boss, because, mm-hmm. because when the sea sprite, okay, so we got wine this back. So the, the first major event that happens in the season, we should just start breaking this down at this point. So the first major event that happens in the season is the sea sprite bomb, which kicks everything off. The sea sprite is a hotel on, on the boardwalk. It's kind of a, like a rundown motel. Yeah, this this is basically for, you know, like, it's a rundown motel basically for the poorer people in Neptune. You know, people who can't afford to get a room in the Grand. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, th- this is this is the uh, middle class, lower income, you know, board. And it, it's packed now because it's spring break. And, like, there's tons of spring break people in Neptune. They make, they make a point to say Neptune is a hot spring break destination. And there's all these businesses along the beach that make a ton of money off of these people people coming in every year for spring break you know so at this point the sea sprite is just packed pack. they're making money hand over fist um you know everything's great but then this bomb goes off in the lobby this is also where we're introduced to this it is kills also where, four it kills where, four people where yeah it kills four people this is where we're introduced to two important people for the season so we have the pizza guy played by uh Pat and oswald pat and oswald thank you pizza guy played by pat and oswald and we have a young girl named maddie who whose father was the owner of the Sea Sprite who, who was killed in the bomb. Yeah, he was killed. A senator's um, son was at the side of the bombing and his girlfriend was killed. Some asshole, who was, like, uh, some asshole who was like shoving a unconscious woman's head into his crotch just like the night before is also killed in the bombing. Nobody mourns for him. <laughs> and this nerd who turns out to be like the yeah. nephew of a cartel boss. Yes, this nerd, this geek who turns out to be the nephew of the cartel boss. In fact, it's his death that gets the Mexican cartel hitmen involved in the story. Alonzo and Dotty, the cartel hitmen. Yes. That, Who are, are after... great, by the way. They, they have, like, sort of scenes, like, like, sort of funny scenes together. Yeah. Well, I like that even at the beginning, like, before they go down to Neptune, where, like, Alonzo's, like, his buddy, the guy that's, like, his partner is always scared, and he's just, like, so passe about everything, and then his partner gets, like, murdered, and his head gets thrown over the wall, and he just, like, keeps the head around. Yeah, he just keeps the head around. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, it, it, it's funny, too, because, like, they're not depicted, like, Mexican cartel hitmen are usually depicted in, like, TV shows. They're depicted as, like, they're, they're just, like, working class guys, you know, like, who whose job happens to be they kill people but they treat yeah. it like they treat it like a working class job you know like and it's it's funny too because like they're in neptune and they're enjoying everything that's in neptune they kind of get to thinking man you know if we weren't born into the cartel you know this is the kind of life we could be living yeah 
<laughs> Alonzo, Alonzo in particular, he's got a girlfriend. Yes, now. he's got a girlfriend who happens to be, uh, I think, Weevil's sister. Yes. Yeah, so he gets involved with Weevil's gang, you know. Yeah, kind of vaguely. Like, we, he goes to, like, Weevil's, like, barbecue with his gang, and Weevil instantly spots him as Cartel based on some tattoos and stuff. Yes, yes. And Weevil's is like, are nice. you down here for business or pleasure or something? And he's like, business. And he's like, did you have anything to do with this bombing? And right. he's like, he's like, we didn't set it off. And he's like, well, you didn't answer the question. And so that kind of starts off kind of a somewhat contentious relationship between Weevil and Alonzo. Yes, yes. There, there's friction there. Also because, you know, Alonzo is with his sister and, you know, we, Weevil, Weevil, Weevil is all about families protecting the family. So. Speaking of Weevil, Weevil's kind of, I don't know if this happened in the movie and I just forgot about it, but I don't think so. Weevil's kind of had like a falling out with Veronica. I think the, this happened off the screen. The specific falling out didn't happen in the movie, but the event that they referenced that led to the falling out did happen in the movie, which was where where like he got shot by that woman car, mm-hmm. and and basic it was it was basically remember when he was confronting like uh he was confronting like uh those gang kids I guess they're harassing this woman and and she was like and he went to check up on her and like she shot him and apparently he took the fall for for like harassing this woman or oh whatever. yeah and for yeah yeah and they explain off screen like 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 basically yeah basically, Keith put himself out for to yeah. for, for Weevil as like a, he worked his butt off to kind of get uh Weevil um justice and then Weevil ended up taking some kind of a payoff or something yeah, like he, he he t- he he ended up taking some deal and basically returning back to his life of crime after Efforts, you know, because yeah. as, as Weevil ex- says it, you know, like like he had lost everything at that point, and and so he and Weevil's justification is at that point he he had lost everything. His wife left him, took kids or took kid, and 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 so he he went back to crime to pay the bills, you know. To like he says, you know, he has he had to support his family, sister stuff. Yeah, so uh, we find out about them because there's this whole instance in, in the investigation in which Veronica gets uh, held up by by a, a a kid, a street gang member. Did you recognize who that was, by the way? Uh, yes, yes, from uh, American Vandal. Yes. yes. <laughs> the main character from American Vandal, but he's in this. He's playing Juan Diego. Uh, so, we so later they, find out he's the apparently after, pooper. Apparently after... <laughs> Apparently, after Netflix canceled American Vandal, uh, he had nowhere else to shop his uh, crime-solving documentaries, so he turned to a life of crime and leave his game. Yes. <laughs> so he went, he, he's, and, and uh, they, they tied into American Vandal because he's the icebox pooper. Yes, he's the icebox, exactly. He's the icebox pooper. He also has, it's funny because, yeah, so he, he, he tries to stick up Veronica, but she, but she finds fresh $100 bills like mint crisp, you know? Like, and she's wondering, you know, like, what, what is a small time gang member doing with like money that just looked like it just rolled off the printing press? You know, like, yeah. like real money, not kind of, <laughs> you know, like, like shit that you get direct from bank. Um, yeah. You know, like, like, you know, that's what she wonders. And so this ties into another thing with what's going on, because what's going on is Big Dick is, tr- Big Dick is trying to pass these resolutions along the, uh, the beachfront properties, where he called, like, the nut resolutions, where, where he, he's, like, trying to pass, like, all these decency or ordinance, you know, like... Which is basically just, like, a Donald Trump-esque scam to, to clear up all the real estate in the area. Yeah, yeah, he, he's trying, he's trying to make it harder for these, bu- these business owners to run their businesses so that he can buy the, buy up the property. It's all a scam to do that. And know, this and brings the, in one of the, one of the other new characters for this year, that's a very welcome addition, which is J.K. Simmons. Yes, J.K. Simmons. Playing Clyde place. Pickett. Yes. Who is kind yes. of like an old school kind of honorable bank robber. Yeah. Like honor among thieves type bank robber guy. Uh, and uh, yeah, so Dick, when he was in the clink, <laughs> uh, Clyde kind of cleverly set him up. To basically like make it look like he saved him, right, right, and and that that put uh, Dick in his debt, and basically Dick made him his personal assistant after that, which put gave Clyde like lots of money and a good chance to get you know they had a plan where where Dick was trying to do this plan to to do the real estate thing, and Clyde's part of the deal was he was going to get this like classic car shop that he wants, 
Uh, and then he'd be out of Dick's service and be able to kind of start his life over with that. Yeah, that's what he was hoping. Basically, hope, hoping to use Dick's money by getting his braces to, to start his dream business and like, restart his life over. From. But Big Dick lives up to his name. Yes, Big Dick. <laughs> well, well he, he confronts, you know, Big Dick. Well, well, he finds out Big Dick uh, basically sold this this uh, bar, uh, Quackers? Something like that. Uh, I can't remember, but yeah, the, the bar plays a big part in the series. Yeah, yeah, basically, 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 Big Dick gets his bar sold to him, and then he sells it to somebody else when he was supposed to sell Clyde, because that's where Clyde was going to put his classic car business, you know? And when Clyde confronts him about this, he's, like, super dismissive, to the point where, like, he pretends like he doesn't even know what he's talking about, and he's like, oh, it's no big deal, you know, we'll, we'll find somewhere else to put it. The way he, he's, like, he's just super dismissive and condescending and doesn't care. This really pisses off Clyde. I was going to bring up the crime itself, which is that uh, we find out eventually that it was uh, all these bombings and stuff. They're not all being done by Big Dick and Clyde or whatever. We find out that the Sea Sprite bombing was Big Dick Clyde. And yeah, but then we find out later that it wasn't even Clyde. It was Big Dick had contracted somebody else. Uh, ill-advised. Yes, Big Dick contracted a member of the the old Irish gang. The Fitzpatrick the gang. The Fitzpatrick, yeah. Member of the Fitzpatrick gang who had a history of of bombings, you know, orchestrating bombings and had the bomb-making know-how because Big Dick doesn't have any bombing know-how uh, neither does Clyde Pickett, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Clyde didn't even really... Like, this kind of went on behind Clyde's back. At first, we think that the two of them were in on that together. But then we find out that Big Dick basically got got impatient and decided to do a bomb and what ended up happening was that the bomb was supposed to go off when nobody was there right because As, because, because big dick is inept you know like yeah, yeah he told the set set it up so like it was supposed to go off in the middle of the night and nobody was in the lobby and so because it went off in the middle of the day you know that and killed four people that was unintentional because of the, like an internet outage right because of the like caused it to, caused to go it. off early yes and so that ended up killing people, and, and Clyde was upset about that. And he's like, Clyde quickly realizes through the events of the series, we, he's kind of already at that point where he's realized that, like, Dick is, is, Big Dick is very unstable. The sad thing is, also, the tragic thing is also, like, during the course of the series, Clyde forms a relationship with uh, Keith Mars. Like, even though, e- even though, like, they both have the understanding that they're playing each other, you know, like, they still form this relationship. That, and it's kind of ruined when, when Keith finally realizes that Clyde was involved with Big Dick and, and knew about the plan to bomb the sea sprint, you know? Yeah, and, and I and, call their internet ship uh, the SS uh, yes. uh, Clyde. <laughs> and and, and, and it, it's really sad, too, because, like, uh, you know, at the end, like, of the series, you know, Clyde makes this really impassive, you know, really passionate plea that, oh, you know, we, we, can, we can still be friends, you know, like, I didn't really have anything to do with that, you know, like, we, you know, I, I, I want to be friends. And Keith is just like, nope, not gonna happen. Yeah. And that's, uh, yeah, that's basically Clyde's character. He's in it. He's kind of Dick's assistant. He's kind of seen as a somewhat dangerous figure. Um, but more than that, he's, uh, you know, he's, a, he's a good, like, a friend relationship with Keith. And Veronica has one like that too. And they actually directly contrast them as like, there's a point in which both of them are suspects for the bombing. Yeah. And Keith and Veronica are like, Keith's like, oh, it's your friend. And Veronica's like, no, it's your friend. And, yeah. And Veronica's newfound friendship also ends up being Dude, uh, yeah. Because, well, because uh, the bar owner at Quackers, I'm just gonna call it Quackers. <laughs> Nicole care. Malloy, who is, by the way, played by Kirby Howell uh, Baptiste from The Good Place. She was she played Chidi's uh, oh, girlfriend. That's Chidi's girlfriend. Yeah, you're right. Damn. Very different character. She's like very sweet in the good place, and she's kind of yes. like really tough in this. She, yeah, she, yeah, she's a badass in this. Like it, it, we know she she has like well she has this backstory right now. Like 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 she was raped before, so now so she's like su- working at the bar that she now owns. Working, yeah, she was raped working at the bar. Now she knows she. She under she understands like like she she took control of that bar as a form of revenge against the former owner who allowed the conditions to exist for her to break mm-hmm. because because like she had he had these women you know walking to their cars late at night with like no security no cameras or protection you know uh, and 
even though they claim. And so she shares this with Veronica. You know, Veronica and her get really close because they're similar and they gel mm-hmm. really well. But Veronica, being Veronica, she you know, everybody's a suspect. You know, including including her. So so even though Veronica really likes Nicole, she still bugs her office to find out what she's doing. You know, and what she, what she's up to. Eventually, yeah. eventually, eventually, Veronica comes around to determining that Nicole isn't involved in the bombings, but but Veronica, Veronica has this crisis of conscience that's like, oh shit, well, she's innocent, and I want to continue my relationship with her, but I, I bugged her, you know, and, and I, I listened to all her stuff, I have to come clean about that. Mm-hmm. Veronica's like, well, you know, Veronica's why it's like, I can't move forward until I come clean about this. So Veronica comes clean about her bugging Nicole, and Nicole is basically like, her reaction is like, wow, our relationship is over. You've sunk lower than you know. I thought anybody go like like this is done. Mm-hmm. It's a real like crushing scene, you know. And 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 if you think like they make up later or something, they don't. Like that's the last time Nicole appears in the series for that scene. Like it's just yeah. over. Which is sad, because, you know, Veronica could use a friend by the end of the series. Yeah, Veronica could use a friend by the end of the series, but, oh, well, I, that's a that's, that's what happens when you're Veronica Mars. Yes. Let's let's talk about um, a character we already mentioned, but we didn't get too deep into, who ends up kind of becoming the real villain of the story. Now, we mentioned that Big Dick set off the initial bomb in this to kill people, not but intending there, to kill people. But there's three more bombings that have, no, well, Big Dick did the bomb for a sea sprite, and then he also, like, did the bomb that killed the, the, the guy, guy he paid to do it he yeah paid to do it yeah so big dick was behind those bombings but there's three additional bombings that were like a separate bomber and it makes sense because the additional bombings don't really fit into any of the mo of like the sea sprite or something right there's no obvious mo behind random bombing on the beach some guy getting hit getting a bomb strapped to his neck and his head blowing up yeah and like a very saw style a very saw <laughs> style like yeah very gruesome and then a bombing at Quackers, like, there's there's no rhyme or reason to the bombs, you know, like, Quackers might fit into that MO with the Sea Sprite, because it's another business, but we find out that prior to that bombing, it had already been sold to Dick Casablancas, so it, it made the whole motive fall apart there, because it's like, okay, if Dick already has this business, then why would he have to bomb if that was Chris? So the person we find out who did the other bombs was kind of a, what was introduced originally as kind of like a harmless character, uh, that kind of just gets in the way. He gets yes. in the way because he's excited about kind of like murder stuff. Well, he, <laughs> like, well, he, well he, he's introduced, he's the pizza guy, he's Patton Oswalt. Yeah. Penn His character's Epner. name is Penn Eppner, yeah. And, and he's introduced as like, he, he's the head of these group, this group he calls the Murder Heads, where, who are like super enthusiastic, like junior detectives, you know? Yeah. And, and his involvement. And conspiracy theorists, yeah. <laughs> and, conspiracy, and his involvement in the case is just played off as like he's really enthusiastic about mysteries and solving mysteries and conspiracy theories. And he gets out to the press and blows leads and causes problems like that, you know? Like, yes. Where it's not necessarily seen as, as a, uh, um, as, as a particularly harmful character, just a character that kind of inadvertently gets in the way. And, right. uh, we find out that's not the case. Yeah, we find out that's not exactly the case. They piece it together because, because after, because he's, he's a victim of the sea sprite bomb. Like, he, he leaves the lobby by total chance, like about a, a, a minute before the bomb goes off. He's outside the door, and he's not behind this bombing, so it's not like he set this up or anything. Like, like, like he's ta- he's blindsided by this, but he gets a nail in his back, and we and and he assumes, and everybody assumes at first that the nail that that is lodged in his back after the sea sprite bombing is shrapnel from the bomb. He assumes it, and mm-hmm. we find out that, and Veronica figures out that there's two bombers because the bomb because they find out that there weren't any nails in the sea sprite bomb when, because Leo comes. And and visits and Leo is a member of the FBI at this point, and so Veronica gets together with him and learns like what they know about the case, and that's when Leo tells Veronica that the FBI didn't find any nails in the Sea Sprite bomb, even though yeah. Penn Epner had a nail in his back, and so Veronica's wondering that. Well, Maddie had a piece of string artwork that she did hanging up in the lobby, and Veronica finds out that the nail that was lodged in Penn Epner's back is the same as the nails that were used in that piece of artwork. Mm-hmm. And so the nail came from the art piece and not the bomb. But 
the three other bombings, the bombing on the beach, the saw style bomb, and the bombing quackers, had had the same type of nails in those bombs. That's how Veronica pieces it together. So at that point she knows it's a copycat, somebody that knows about the nail, which is quite a few people. Yeah, but what ends up leading them to the actual problem, that the actual case where, that it's in, is because they, they look into, um, just by chance, like as like a different lead on the case, other acts of violence against spring breakers. Yes. And there was a one case in which a boy died in like a tent fire. Well, it's funny because like, uh, the one point at the end when, when the police decide to put a worn out pen after and they arrest them, pen and hires Veronica and Keith and says, you know, well, prove me innocent. And then and then they're like, okay, let, and Veronica's like, okay, assuming you're innocent, let's start breaking down ideas. And immediately Veronica goes, oh, yeah, let's uh, ask those spring breaker, well, let's ask the uh, fraternity kids, you know, and as soon as she brings it up, Penn's like, no, no, that is the wrong avenue, you know, you're, that, you're looking in the wrong place. Like, he gets, like, super assertive that they should not go digging there. Mm-hmm. You know, like, immediately, <laughs> like, red flags start now. <laughs> <laughs> but they do end up finding out what they do what they end up finding out is that there was this there's this boy that died in a like he was in a tent that was set on fire on the beach and at first it seems to be like all of the kids think that one of the other kids that was there set it on fire so none of them want to talk because they're all terrified of their own friends and they think that one of their friends like did this um what we end up finding out eventually one of them ends up giving the story up which is that they seemingly killed in quotation marks, a pizza delivery man. Yeah, they, they at, supposedly the uh, drowned the pizza delivery man. Yeah, and then the guy died in the tent after that, and the guy who gives up that story believes that the, that guy who died in the tent fire was because the other people thought he was going to crack and kind of, like, expose them. So similar to, like, the, what happened with the, the boat incident in the Veronica Mars movie, uh, where, like, you know, they were all worried that one of them was going to crack on the other ones, and I know, yes. I know what you did last summer type situation. And, and, and this is where, like, they come out, they come out with, like, reveals, and then double reveals, and then, like, you know, fake outs, and then other reveals, because, like, like, as soon as, like, Veronica sure it's Penn Epner, then they find, then Maddie finds... Which, by the way, they find out because they said, he's a hobbit-looking guy. Yeah, he's a hobbit. <laughs> Matt, Maddie finds a ticket that supposedly proves that it wasn't Penn Epner, and then that's why we find out the other guy that was involved in Murderheads. They, they think it's Don, who's they, another one of the Murderheads, played by Clark Duke. Played by Clark Duke, who who supposedly is a congressional intern in D.C., only he only we find out he's been lying about that, and he's actually he's still... He's like a shut-in. Yeah, he's a shut-in. He's been lying about that, and he is actually still li- a college dropout, still living in Neptune. Yeah, and so he's, or like, I think, was it Neptune, or I think he was actually in San Diego. I think they oh, took he like might have been. Yeah, he might but that's, yeah, that's the character of Don, who's also kind of Hobbit-looking. That's Clark Duke who plays him. Yes. Who's great in this, by the way. Yeah. Because he's constantly antagonizing. Yeah, he's constantly uh, Penn. antagonizing Penn and Oswald's character. Penn and Penn. Yeah, and, and Logan and Veronica when they were there. <laughs> and it's a shame. So so there's this moment in time where it looks like it could be him. You know, Penn takes Veronica and Keith to where, to their supposed, like, where they hung out when they were working together at Pizza Place. Uh, you know, like, uh, Penn takes this backpack that he says is full of supplies, puts it in Veronica's car, and, and then they get there, and, and they find Don dead, he has a bullet in him, and there's apparently a confessional note taped to his body, and then, and then Maddie, Keith, Keith is waiting in the car, because he can't climb up the stairs. Right, yeah. at this point, because of the car accident that happened in the movie, Keith has a bad hip. So he can't climb up all those stairs. So while Keith is waiting, uh, he gets a call from Maddie where Maddie reveals that she, she noticed something strange about the tickets and that they're, they're out of order. Yeah, like the, the ticket with Don's name on it that would implicate him in that situation is not in the sequence with the other tickets of the night. Right. So suggesting that somebody moved the ticket intentionally to make it look like, to implicate Don. Yeah. We should mention that while they're trying to, while they're with Penn, discovering Don's body and everything, there's a threat in the form of a limerick yes. of well, another bomb. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There's another, the reason they're racing is because there's another bomb threatening to go off, you know, and they're racing to try and find out, you know, to, to find Don or to find plant the bomb so that they can stop 
Yeah. And so at this point, uh, with Keith kind of running up the stairs, barely, um, he pulls a gun on Penn and he's like, you know, tells Veronica what happened, what Maddie uncovered. And, uh, Penn's still like, I didn't do it. Like, you don't understand those, those, uh, order ticket books. They were all over the place. We just grabbed random ones, whichever ones. It didn't matter. Right. You right. Know? He's like, oh, it's normal then. So I'm just like, that's not yeah. a big deal. But, but at this point, they're not buying it. And they take, they basically take Penn and to citizens arrest you know and they and they and they basically figure out on their own where the next bomb's gonna go off you know which is yeah, at, Kane at College, the high school Kane high school where uh Wallace is working out and they're having a uh like a celebration with I think the high school being named Kane high school yes um with with uh our, our good old friend uh Jake Kane yeah with our good old friend <laughs> Jake Kane making an appearance uh there's the- a com- commemorative ceremony so he's there Wallace is there maddie's there she's in like the band um so it's like there's a bunch of people there you know and so they they're trying to call people like she tries to call wallace he can't hear his phone ringing because of everything else going on there uh you know they try to make other calls nothing really works they get down there jake kane's immediately like like oh you're trying to ruin this you know? yeah yeah you're trying to ruin it. yeah exactly you know Veronica he thinks manage, it's some petty manage, thing manages to let everybody know that there's a bomb um and, and, and her dad, like, is really pressing on, Keith is really pressing on Penn to just give himself up and tell them where the bomb is. And, and how really, to deactivate and it. how to deactivate it. Penn is still trying to put up this, this front, like, I don't know, you know, the real bomber's still out there. You're just wasting time with me. And Keith is like, fine, we're just going to sit here until the bomb goes off. You know, like. Keith reveals the mental condition that he thinks he has. Yes. Which we later find out he doesn't. Uh, in which he, he's, well, we, kind of like a dementia. Mention- like well, situation. we should mention that all season he's been having memory issues. He's been forgetting this, this, yes. this, that. But I'll I'll circle back around to that in a moment. But so, but so basically, he's just he reveals the condition he thinks he has pen and says, you know what, you know, I, my mind's going anyway, so I don't mind dying here. Uh, so we can just sit here and die together. And <laughs> and eventually, Pen knowing that the bomb is going to go off and knowing that he's going to die, and Pen not wanting to die from his own bomb, finally is forced to give himself up and help defuse the bomb. Yeah, which makes Keith and Veronica the heroes, gets them the, the money, which, by the way, the, the kid who got his head blown up, his father, in, in a funny scene, is this total asshole rich guy yes. that owns a private island and has declared himself king and calls his son the prince. Because, because we, should, we, should men- we should mention that this kid who got his head blown off, he was he trying was, to roofie girls. He was trying yeah. to roofie girls and quackers, and one of the one of the, one of the reasons Nicole was a suspect is because uh, one of the victims in the Sea Sprite bomber was was a guy who was in the bar the previous night sexually assaulting a woman and and now this guy was roofing women in that bar and he ends up with a bomb strapped to his neck so you know that was kind of like making Cole look like suspicious like she was taking revenge on these using the bomb stick revenge on these predators which the sea sprite bomb would just been like a hell of a it's like you know I'd like that that didn't make sense just for that alone that that was the yeah that Veronica was operating on for a short period of time yeah um, but, uh, yeah, so he's now, uh, uh, he being, um, Penn is now, uh, uh, acknowledged as the person who, who did all these other bombs. Um, like I said, Veronica gets like 250,000, Veronica and Keith. Penn basically says he did bombings because he hates spring breakers. Yeah, because of the situation he went through and he just thinks, you know, they're scum and he, he basically became opportunistic at the moment. He killed before because he set fire to that tent with the kid in it. They, they, st- they that still, kid. they still don't kind of explain why two of Penn's bombs were general bombs, and one was like really specific against this one kid. That seemingly, like, I don't think they said that 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 kid had anything to do with what happened to Penn at the drowning incident. So it's it's just weird. He's just a spring breaker that just, Penn hates them. I guess. <laughs> really was set up to make Cole suspicious. It's it's funny, though, though, the way they do this, because uh, when you try to examine everything under a microscope, then some things just don't connect or fall apart, because, like, trying to write things to make things look like one way or not. But you just have to roll with it. Yeah, so, so this, you know, puts an end to the mystery. Everything's, you know, good until Veronica realizes at the end, we already mentioned at the very beginning, that Logan died. Well, we and did. this is what leads to it, which well, is that... Yeah, that's why I mentioned... Uh, 
Pen uh, taking along his backpack of supplies and, and putting it in Veronica's car. Yeah, so there's there's a the, the limerick that led them to the high school also led them to this other moment in the same time because it mentions a different country and that would be the time in that country, which would be later. And basically, the bomb is in Veronica's car, set to a timer, and it's set to a timer to go off right before the street cleaning, which they they've made a point through the episode of like how she has to move her car, she'll get a ticket, right, because right. of the street cleaning, and and they did that a few times. And Logan, Veronica, and Logan get married. We should say that. We don't have to dive too much into it. There's a fake out, though, because, like, they're they're ready to get married, and and then Veronica says, gets a text from Logan that says sorry, because he's he's late, and he's not there, so she gets a catch. So we, so there's a fake out where, like, they go Logan, like, like bailed. Bailed, yeah. And and then he, he shows up for the wedding, and he's like, no, I texted you, I'm going to be a few minutes. Sorry, I'm going to be a few minutes late. And she just didn't get the second half of it yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so... They got married, uh, finally after the whole situation with the bomb and everything, Veronica decided to go for it. Um, and then, uh, uh, or actually it was before that that she decided to go for it, but it was, it was after she had like a, a wet dream about. And it's funny too, because <laughs> like, like right before she gets married, that's the scene where Logan runs in Parker at, you know, getting his marriage, the marriage license. And, and then he runs after Parker for advice. And then we see him. Because she had a bad, a bad marriage. Yeah, because she had just broken up. She had just divorced. And it was funny because she, she was explaining that she just got divorced. And then it, it was, it was, it was funny too because he's like, Oh, I'm getting married. She's like, Oh, who? Yo, know, you remember Veronica? You know, <laughs> part, part of Parker had to have like, died inside of that at that point, right? <laughs> like, yeah. So they uh, um they got married. They're they're in the apartment and uh Logan says like, you know, they they remember the street cleaning and he's like, "Oh, I'll go move the car." And she's like, "Okay." And then she puts together that those clues because when she was talking to Penn in the car after he had, you know, given up and and admitted what he had done and everything, he made an implication about if you're still around. Yeah, yeah, he said that if you're still around, you know, He'll come visit, you know. Yeah, and and uh, that's when we we she gets she re- using that and also the kind of the limerick and putting the pieces together realizes that Pen, Pen made like a big Pen Pen basically start start boasting about being criminal mastermind, you know, like 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 he's fucking like Moriarty or some shit, like he starts going off to Veronica about that, you know, like he, he thinks yeah. he's a genius. He's gonna go down in history and be like famous, and you know he's gonna people aren't going to admit or aren't going to believe that he did it and he's gonna he'll have like a fiance in prison like the serial killers often do and stuff and he's kind of going off about all that stuff but Veronica puts those pieces together realizes that there's another bomb and just as she's about to realize it's, it happened she's like running towards the window to yell out to Logan and it blows up and that's when Logan dies that's when Logan dies and we get the epilogue to series which is apparently where the series is going to go in the future because we jump ahead one year where Veronica's driving along and she's like trying to cope with Logan's death and see her talking to Logan's therapist. And we find yeah, out Veronica, which is Logan had been through the whole movie, through the whole series had been trying, trying to get, to, her get to, to go with him to the therapist. Yes. But she's so now that Logan's dead, she's talking to his therapist. And we find out that Veronica is going to start taking cases outside of that. Yeah. Because the one benefit, I guess, of all the shit that happened is that their name as a detective agency got all over the place. Yes. And so now they're getting calls from outside of town yeah, and now, stuff. Yeah, now she's getting calls from outside of town, so... I guess and she just likes to get out of Neptune. She just can't deal with being in Neptune. So I guess the prospective pitch for the series now is that Veronica Mars is going to be taking on mystery cases wherever, you know, it's not necessarily going to be her, like, stuff happened to her on out. Meanwhile, Keith has had a hip replacement. Yes, it, we find out that his memory issues were just caused by... A, medications by that were medi- overlapping. Yeah, medications that were overlapping. It said minor adjustment. Um, yeah, this this doubles back. Okay, so so we gotta explain, like, the hitmen, right, who are coming. They're, they're trying to fit... Their job is to kill whoever was behind the bomb and kill drug cartel boss's nephew. Uh, they're basically taking any... Any lead they could find, their first lead, like, they, they, they basically ask the kids' friends, you know, if they know anybody who would do it, they need some guy named King Parkinski, something like that. 
and they end up they end up killing that guy and they see him with the, his head at first you know like but he's obviously not the person who did it they figured that out the second suspect turns out to be Daniel Maloof who is the senator running who is who is the senator who is being blackmailed yeah, and his son and his son didn't get killed in the bombing, but his his son's girlfriend did. His son's girlfriend. And then there's this whole drama with her family. A bunch of like redneck hillbillies. Yeah, yeah like they're a bunch of redneck hillbillies. Like you know, and they want the ring that, they that want, her her their son had proposed to this girl with this ring that's very valuable, and they want that ring. Like they don't care about the girl, but they want. They're like you know, if since he gave it to her, it's her property, and since she died and, and she's our family, that ring's ours, and we want the money that. that rings were so they're like pressuring the senator senators getting blackmailed as you mentioned for you know masturbating to some cam girl i think yeah sure masturbating to some girl at this point logan it happens to yeah it's like so so this redneck family they have two like like this woman has two sons these big get big dudes they can they basically bust into or they bust into the senator's hotel room at grand basically to assault him logan just happens to be there he's picking up a check he's from the senator for Veronica. Yeah, he's picking up a check from the senator for Veronica, so he just happens to be there. When they but Logan's in. like a naval intelligence officer now. Yes. So he's like a badass now. Yeah, he's like a badass now, so he fucking he fucking takes them out. He wrecks them, yeah. He wrecks them. And uh, he, he gets a job being head of, you know, being Maloof's head of security. Um, at this point, it's not shortly after that it's that the cartel hitmen catch up with Maloof, and they plan to... And, and He's their next suspect because of... Of Penn Epner coming out and accusing him. Yes, yes, he's their next suspect because Penn Epner. And these these guys aren't really doing any detective work. They're just like going to. They're just going to anybody they see having a finger point. They're just them. enjoying Neptune, and whenever they hear that somebody is responsible, they'll go and try to kill him. Yeah, they'll go and try to kill him. Uh, so so they go after him, but but he is picked up by by these rednecks, you know, before they get to him. And so they follow these redneck like hillbillies out there, and and they're beating up on the loof uh you know they have him tied up and they're gonna like torture him to death they have tied up they they chase him away and they basically take Maloof and Maloof thinks he's been saved but they plan on taking him and killing him until a news report comes out on the radio that basically that basically exonerates Maloof they, that basically says oh it's not, oh yeah it's this is this was after like the 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 guy the Fitzpatrick guy was actually was actually responsible for helping orchestrate the sea strike bomb it was which is the one that killed which is the one that killed their <laughs> nephew like this guy was actually involved this was after like the police caught up to him and then the bomb killed him and and when they thought like they solved the case completely with the death of this guy that comes up on the radio and then they're just like oh, shit what do we do now because we gotta kill him anyways because yeah, he knows too much yeah we gotta kill him anyways because he knows too much he basically he basically makes them a counter offer that he's like well you know he'll pay them a ton of money to forget about him you know and that and then he gets an idea that he's like actually you know what i'll pay you double if you go back and kill those rednecks you know and, yeah and and so they take that as a side job you know they take, he ends up going to them later and <laughs> yeah. telling him not to do it but, but they'd already done it they did already done it they had like a video on their phone you know showing them like doing it while smiling at camera you know yeah <laughs> One of the guys actually survives and ends up shooting the senator. Like that's not essential to the main story. No, it's not so essential. Yeah, that part's that. not essential. Just, but this, yeah, that's basically where the senator's storyline ends too. Like, there's another part where we find out who the blackmailer was. It's like some hacker kid that Logan confronts. Some yeah, right wing hacker. Some right kid. Yeah. So well, well, they like they like set it up because they make it sound like the super dangerous guy. Like they're like, oh, you know, this this guy is a member of a group that thinks the M- the NRA are libtard pussies. You know. And like, <laughs> and like, you think so? It's like, they're, so Veronica is like, you know, Logan, just make sure that you're armed when you go you go talk to this guy. No, it wasn't Veronica. It was it was the naval guy that Logan talked to. That's right, it was the naval guy. And he's like, just make sure you're armed when you go talk to this guy. So you're expecting like some, you know, like uh, some militia, you know? Yeah. And, and then we find Logan him. shows up instead of being regularly armed. He just shows up in full uniform. Yeah, he just shows up in full uniform. So I'm expecting this militia dude, but we find out it's it's just like some fucking teenager, like some. 4 troll, you know? Yeah. And, and, basic, and basically, he, he had gotten access to Maloof's computer because because he found Maloof's password because he had it, like, taped to his computer or something. You know, he was re- really lax about internet, you know, his computer security. Uh, 
and and basically Lo- Logan basically tells him he's gonna cut the shit out or or like or the fucking navy is gonna come down hard on him you know mm-hmm. and Logan solves that problem so it turns out the whole blackmail thing because the theory was the blackmail was related to the bombings when we find out had nothing bombings through that yeah and that's basically the entirety of the Maloof storyline he doesn't appear again after the second redneck brother gets killed by his new head of security Logan Lewis. he does we see him in the hospital kind of recovering yeah but that's basically that's pretty much that it <laughs> but the Mexican cartel hitman story continues because then the because then the second bombing this time perpetrated by Penn Epner happens and so so after they believe that their target was dead like they stick around because now they believe like like everybody believes the bomber's still out there so now there's they're looking for the bomber and and the one becomes aware of Veronica Mars because she's she she's interrogating that kid outside of you know Weevil's garage and he's standing there and finds out through Weevil's sister who Veronica Mars is gets to the point where Veronica Mars and Veronica and Keith become aware of the cartel hitmen and Veronica breaks into his gets into his hotel room and takes the pictures and then he finds out and then and he and his partner decide to tail Veronica and Keith. And, and his partner's like, why don't we just kill her? You know, And then he's like, because you idiot, she's going to lead us to whoever the bomber is. So if we follow her, we're going to find the bomber. And then we kill the bomber and her at the same time. Which they end up trying to do once there's a manhunt out for Penn. Yes. Yes. Once The, the first time when, when when we're not sure if he did it or not. Yeah. yeah at this yeah, point. We're not sure. But please put out an APB for Penn Ebner, you know, based on finding bomb making material and instructions in his in his apart in his uh, house and also the Veronica and Keith figure out where he is yes they go to and they tail them and try to shoot him up and kill them all they try yeah they at try this to kill cabin. them all this is when we find the subplot this is when the subplot with Keith forgetting things comes to a head because they're in the shootout and his and Keith's gun doesn't have any bullets because he didn't load it bullets are still in the car and Keith has like a breakdown where he's like this this is it this I knew our memory was gonna was gonna get us hurt or killed and this is it this is happening now this is the moment I fear. Um, thankful, thankful. So he's he wants to give things up at that point. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, and it looks like it looks like it's gonna get to that point where like like Keith is gonna get killed. Uh, but thankfully Weevil had caught wind of what was going on, and Weevil and his entire gang show up to chase the hitmen away. You know, and which we, is kind of redemption for what Weevil had done before. Yes, it's kind of redemption for what Weevil had done before. You know, we, it's also when you realize that Weevil's sister is just complete trash. Yeah. We, yeah. Weevil's sister is complete. <laughs> Because she's like, oh, you're not going to have to worry about that Veronica bitch anymore or something. Yeah. And it's like, it, and it's clear at that point that she knows that she's going to be murdered. Yeah, yeah. And she's, she's just all cool with it. Yeah, she's cool with it. She's like, you don't have to worry about that Veronica bitch anymore. And Weevil's just like, what do you mean by that? What the hell does that mean? Why, why won't I have to worry about Veronica anymore? And then that's when Weevil takes off, you know? Like, <laughs> you know, like, like Weevil is pissed at Veronica, but he doesn't want to see you dead, you know? So that kind of somewhat heals their relationship. It's so, it's so, well, yeah, it's somewhat, but they're, they're, it leads us into the chance in the next season they might have, uh, be able to have some relationship again. There's still issues between them. It's not like he's forgiven her, but you know. It, yeah, but she's also like, he's admitted now, not to her, but admitted to himself now that Veronica was right about the situation with Clyde, or where she had told him that, you know, what do you think Clyde's going to just keep giving you guys money and keep you around? Like, he's just going to dump you the second he's done, and that ends up happening. And, uh, so there's a Weevil's whole... kind of upset because he's trying to figure out what to do about, to, you know, keep all his boys employed and stuff and keep them getting money. So, Big Dick, at the same time, Big Dick is trying to buy off Maddie to get Maddie to sell the Sea Sprite, you know, promising her a very expensive car as a gift. She turns him down, and then, and then he basically threatens her. He's like, like, you know, this is the easy. I can do, you won't like the hard, you know? Like, he's threatening a child. Like, what the fuck, an asshole? Fuck. Also, like, uh, we have, uh, <laughs> Keith, Keith talking to Clyde convinces Clyde that he tell, when he tells Clyde what he knows about what's going on, that he knows everything that's going on with him and Big Dick, he's like, do you think Big Dick, like, once, you, you, you think he's not gonna get caught for this? And do you think that when he's caught, he's not gonna just roll over on you the first second he gets? Right. And, and, and with that in his head, and also the fact that he's not particularly happy with Big Dick for not honoring his agreement, you know, uh-huh. uh, 
Uh, he's already pissed off at Big Dick. You know, he, and for making a mess of the situation in the first place, because this is also around when we find out that Clyde wasn't in on the bombing of the Sea Sprite. Right. He was in on the cover-up of it, but on, not on the crime on, itself. The crime itself, yeah. For all these reasons, he finally decides he's going to go to the Hitmen, because he, he knows who they are, he knows why they're Neptune. You know, because Clyde has been involved with Big Beeple's gang this whole time, pay, paying them. To shit in iceboxes and yeah, steal purses. Yeah, yeah, to cause trouble on the beachfront to drive down the property prices, you know. It was part of the plot to help Big Dick acquire these properties. Uh, that, that's why he's been doing and. And, and so, and so, because that really, she's aware of what's going on here. So he goes to them, and he's like, basically, like, "Oh, I have a present for you. I know, you know, here's the bomb." And he, and he, and he plays the t- the confession that the conversation he had where big with Big Dick, where Big Dick basically gets to like everything, you know. Yeah. And and this is. Finally, what sets them on the path to killing Big Dick? Maddie happens to be there too because she's trying to snoop around in his home to find evidence and to to implicate him in the bombing. She was snooping in his house after he had left. Yes, he got a security alert on his phone that somebody had broken in his place, so he goes back there. He ends up being kind of a danger to her, but at the same time, those guys have now broken into his it's, house. It's and funny are planning too on because him. like he calls Clyde and he's like. You know, he calls Clyde and he's like, "Somebody's at my house. You, you need to get over here asap." And Clyde's just like, "Oh, it's 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 probably just some row, rowdy. It's probably just some rowdy kids. No, nothing to worry about. You know, uh, call me back if it's if it's something more serious. You know, yeah. Clyde knowing. You know, like Clyde sitting there, like knowing that cartel hitmen are possibly there. And just there's a great little Pulp Fiction esque bit where <laughs> he had been walking around his house. He grabbed a katana that he had on the wall. Well, it's funny too. <laughs> yeah, he grabbed a katana that he. Had on the wall and then when and he was like stalking Maddie with that like looking for her with that yes or not knowing it was Maddie knowing somebody was out stalking whoever happened to be in his house and uh he had put it down when he saw that one of the cartel guys in his pool yes and, and then as that like, guy the other guy was sneaking up behind him with a machete but then the funny part is the guy with the machete sees the katana on the table yes. puts the machete down and grabs the katana, katana yeah kind of reminded me of like Pulp Fiction and like then, that one scene and with then the we katana. got a really great some sweet Maddie gets to witness a really gruesome scene where like he, he runs Big Dick through with a katana and then chops his head clean off. Yeah, and they're like holding his head up and they're stuff and looking at it. His head up. And that is the end of Big Dick. Little Dick still nowhere to be seen. Um and <laughs> I think what else we need to cover? Well, we've talked about Maddie. I guess we could say that Maddie is like a full basic protege of, of Veronica. Yeah, well, what basically happens with Maddie, right, is, yeah, she's, she's, she's in a similar situation as Veronica because the bombing kills her dad and that kind of sets her off on trying, trying on her own to solve the bombing to get justice for her father. You know, she, she, she's the one who goes, who know who remembers the guy who, who, in, who put the uh, snacks in the vending machine that day, who was not their normal, who is not a guy she normally saw stocking that machine. In fact, he put gum in it, she says, and gum is something they don't sell for, you know, for, yeah. for obvious reasons. And, and so basically, she's clever. Yeah. And in that way, she ver- reminds Veronica Mars of herself. She, yeah, in that way, she... And so Veronica Mars takes an interest in her as kind of like a protege. And we see... And Keith and, soon and takes on see, the same kind of we, feeling. And we see that Maddie, Maddie is the one who goes straight to the Fitzpatricks and almost gets herself killed before Veronica Veronica rescues her from that snake's pit, you know. Mm-hmm. And this is when, yeah, that's when Ver- the Ver- Veronica Maddie relationship really begins. Um, yeah, she basically gets like at some point uh, uh, all but adopted by the Mars. Well, yeah, well at some point, uh, Maddie Maddie's mother and and her siblings take a trip to France, and Maddie stays behind, doesn't get on the plane, and so basically there's a situation where like Maddie, the rest of Maddie's family is on another continent, and so the only the only people that are around to take care of her are Keith and Veronica Mars. Yeah, and they become like surrogate family. Because uh, Maddie's mother hires Veronica to find her, her daughter and make sure she's safe. And so that's what Veronica does. And yeah, and they kind of end up becoming Maddie's surrogate family. And that even happens when you see in the time skip that, like, when Veronica's leaving to do these uh, uh, um, cases, like, you know, a year later and stuff, that Maddie's, like, hanging around with Maddie's Keith. Maddie's hanging, yeah, Maddie's hanging around with Keith, basically being his secretary, just like 
Veronica used to do. Basically, yeah, going, answering the calls answering and stuff. Answering the calls and stuff. Yeah, and uh, and I get why you would think like they can do the high school stuff with Maddie, but apparently Rob Thomas says like they go into a whole, a whole thing with Maddie that has to be spinoff series. Yeah, it's it's interesting because you do see some moments of Maddie not necessarily at school, but like around school. Like you see her on a school bus uh, with with uh, Wallace, who is like a now a teacher at the school. Yeah, because and, they don't have uh, uh, yeah because they don't have Mac around. And Veronica is not like a uh, supercomputer literate, and neither is Keith. Like they need to find a hacker, and Maddie says she knows a kid at school, and so yeah, she kind of flirts with him and gets him to gets him to hack do. for her. Yes. So yeah, so it's very similar to she's very similar to Veronica Mars. Yes. Like you know the young Veronica Mars. So uh, yeah, that's uh, trying to think if there's anything else. Or if we should kind of close off here. I don't know. There, there's Vinny, but he, he's just there to be there. He's, he's yeah. He's, Vinny's just there to be kind of. It's not really yeah essential to the plot. Not really. So he's 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 looking for the Malus ring, and also you know he's just an asshole. I guess we could say Wallace if you're a fan of Veronica Mars. Wallace has got a wife and kid now. Yeah, Wallace's wife and kid. <laughs> there's there's a lot of season and a bunch of preppy friends. There's a lot of season three cameos. Uh, like I said, we already mentioned Parker. Uh, there's a scene where Veronica is is in her, is at interviewing the two main villains from season three yeah yeah in prison in prison uh and then we got the the one kid also the the kid who was uh doing who was uh doing uh helping people cheat on their homework you know in exams so max yeah max uh he he's the, at the like town hall meeting or whatever yeah, he's at the, yeah he owns a like a marijuana dispensary now uh yeah that's it basically everybody shows up except for piz and max max mentioned yeah. uh well they're both max mentioned a lot as basic but basically max mentioned as oh uh, oh she's not available we sh- we wish she was because we need her damn it oh well yeah piz is mentioned i think only by logan yeah there's a part where where veronica comes home see He's Logan there, and then Leo comes out because he's there too. And then uh, Logan like jokes like, "Oh yeah, and he, guess who else is here? Piz, come on out!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Piz is here too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, but that doesn't end up being the case. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We were gonna talk about uh, um, Legion, but I'm seeing we're already an hour and twenty minutes in <laughs> on this podcast, so you want to see and we're not talking week? about anything next week except Legion. So let's just do a double. Legion next yeah, week. Yeah, let's do a double lead. Yeah, that sounds... Because, yeah, it's... This is going to already be super long, so... Veronica Mars, yeah, that ran long. There was a lot... There was a lot packed in those eight episodes that I would... I would feel remiss if we didn't touch touch on all this stuff. So, yeah, we said we were going to talk about Legion. I'll edit something in at the beginning saying that we're not or, or not mentioning Legion. Yeah, just, uh, just, basically. just edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, next week we're going to do a double episode on Legion, talking about this week's and, and next week's episode. But until Until then, here's what's coming up in the week ahead. On Sunday, August 4th, 2019, Preacher returns to AMC to start its final season. On Monday, August 5th, 2019, Five Points comes to Facebook Watch, and No Good Nick returns on Netflix. On Wednesday, August 7th, 2019, BH90210 comes to Fox. This is like a meta 90210, like it's about the actors getting together for a reunion. So it's like a meta story. They're like playing versions of themselves. Uh, I know there's a lot of like 90210 fans, like we talked about 90s fandom. Oh, but, but, except for Luke Perry. Yeah, he's not part of it. He was originally, he he had signed on for it, but but he passed away before they began production. That's sad. That kind of, that kind of puts a damper on that. I think he's actually in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the new Quentin Tarantino movie. I think that might be his last film. He is actually in that. Yeah, I think that's his last appearance. So, uh, you know, that's a good one to go out on, I guess. Yeah. Good to go out on a big Tarantino movie. Uh, also, Bulletproof comes to CW. That's a, I think it's a British series or it's a, it's a foreign series that's coming to the CW. They do that sometimes on summer. CW will like, you know, bring over a show from UK or something. Uh, on Thursday, August 8th, 2019, The Naked Director comes to Netflix. Dollar comes to Netflix. Woo Assassins comes to Netflix, which some people are already saying is like the, the Iron Fist series we, we, we wanted but never got or something. It's got like one of the guys 
sacrificing the raid in it, so it's like gonna have like some legit martial arts stuff going on, and it's got kind of like a somewhat little fantasy element that's kind of Iron Fist esque, but not like the series, <laughs> more like just like the concept. Um, so that's that's coming. Uh, and two sentence horror stories comes to the CW. It's like a half hour horror anthology series. Um, then on Friday, August 9th, two thousand nineteen, Rocco's Modern Life Static Cling, like an animated special, is coming to Netflix. Just kind of like a one off reunion special thing. Uh, Cable Girls comes back to Netflix. Syntonia comes to Netflix. And Glow returns to Netflix. We will be talking about Glow uh, a couple weeks after that at some point. We have it on our schedule somewhere. <laughs> then on Sunday, August 11th, 2019, Succession returns to HBO and Squidbillies returns to Adult Swim. And lastly, on Monday, August 12th, 2019, Lodge 49 returns for its second season on AMC. That was a surprisingly good show, the first season of that show. It like plays itself off like it's a mystery series with a little bit of a big Lebowski vibe, but it ends up having like a lot of heart between like the characters and, and just kind of character suffering. And it's like really good story. So, uh, I'm looking forward to that. And also the terror, which is a, a seasonal anthology show, um, returns with its new season called infamy. That's about the, um, the, the tournament, what it could be internment camps, the Japanese internment camps in, uh, America where Japanese Americans were locked up in during world war two. And, and it's basically, a horror story, a supernatural horror story set in the internment camps. Uh, the first season was kind of doing something similar. It was like this case of this boat that disappeared, and like I think cannibalism occurred on it, like in the real story, that it disappeared in this this uh, like in the Arctic Sea or something, and they ended up like eating each other or something. But they made like a supernatural twist on it, like last season. And so this season, it's, it's going to be this supernatural twist on internment camps. And then Our Boys, a miniseries comes to HBO. It's it has to do with uh, um, Israeli soldiers, I think. So, uh, yeah, that's it. As I mentioned, next week we're doing Double Duty on Legion. And that's it. So, thank you everybody for listening. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Tyson Gifford. You can follow Will. He is at Voxel Hero. You can check out our Facebook page and our YouTube channel as well as our site, thetotalscreen.com. You can subscribe, ha, you can subscribe to this podcast through any major podcast client like iTunes or Pocket Cast. And the entire backlog of our podcast is available on our YouTube channel. So, thank you everybody for listening. Good night. Good night. If you would like to reach out to us and make a comment, send an email to contact at thetotalscreen.com. Stay tuned to the total screen for the very best.